Welcome to the video on finding the pH of a weak acid. Now, so far we've been talking about strong acids. So let's just recap that. For a strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the acid itself. Therefore, calculating pH is super easy. You just have to plug it into the negative log equation. And if you know this, you know this, and therefore you can put that in there. And that works. And this is because the um, it's a complete dissociation is not equilibrium. So all hydrochloric acid becomes hydrogen ions, chloride ions. We don't care about chloride ions. We run into a problem with the weak acids because the concentration of the acid is actually greater than the concentration of the hydrogen ion. But that's not a very specific term. How much greater than? How much hydrogen ion do we actually have? So this is going to take some effort to find the concentration of the hydrogen ion. The reason that the hydrogen, uh, the acid concentration is higher, higher is because of this equilibrium. It's not a, a balanced equilibrium. It's actually very heavily in favor of the forward direction. Only a small amount of this is going back to make the reactants. So, I'm sorry. It is very heavily favoring the reverse reaction. Only a small amount of this is actually going forward to making the hydrogen. So we have far less hydrogen than we have acid. But the question is how much? And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, I want to discuss who are the weak acids. The weak acids, would, OK, you should memorize your seven strong acids, and everybody else is weak. Typically, they're organic compounds. For example, acetic acid here um, is like this. And this is how you draw an organic compound. We're going to talk about We're going to have a whole unit on how to do that. But you notice that there are several hydrogens here. The only hydrogens that are going to get dissociated are hydrogens that are part of a polar bond. So only remember polar and nonpolar from your pre-AP days. But these three hydrogens are part of nonpolar bonds. Basically, a hydrogen bound to a carbon is not going to dissociate. That's a nonpolar bond. This hydrogen, however, is part of a polar bond. So when acetic acid dissolves in water, this hydrogen will leave. Now, it will not. 100% of the molecules will not lose their hydrogen. And that's why this is in equilibrium. Some of the, the molecules will, some of them won't. And some of these will get back together again and make the acetic acid again. By the way, here, X just means whatever is the anion that's attached to our hydrogen. We don't care about the anion. Therefore, I don't really put too much effort into figuring out what it is. OK, so if we had a question with the strong acid asking for the pH, all we need to know is the concentration of the acid. Plug that in, take a negative log, we know the pH. If we want to know what is the concentration of, I'm sorry, what is the pH of a weak acid, again, we still need to know, and we're still going to use this equation, we still need to know what our concentration of hydrogen is, and then we're going to take a negative log of that to find pH. The question is, what is the concentration of hydrogen? Because it's not this. So we know it's not just taking the negative log of 0.3. So we've got to figure out what is our um, what is our concentration of hydrogen at the end. Now, since this is an equilibrium, we can use a rice table. So acetic acid, like this, breaks down into hydrogen ions and, and acetate ions. OK, so here's our reaction. For our initial, we have 0.3 molar of that. We have none of this and none of this. And so for our change, we don't know what the change is going to be. We're losing some amount. But Fortunately, we can use stoichiometry, so we're going to gain that same amount of hydrogen and acetate. So down here, we have 0.3 minus x. And here we have x, and here we have x. And so hopefully you remember from unit 3 that we can solve this as long as we know what the Ka is. In class, I'm going to give you a photocopy of Appendix D, which is one of your appendices in the back of the book. So if you wanted to just pull out your book right now and follow along, you can. But in class, you're going to get Appendix D, which comes, of course, right after Appendix C. So you're going to get this acid, uh, aqueous equilibrium process, the whole slew of KAs for weak acids. If we look for acetic acid on Appendix D, we find that it's Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, since this is far, far less than um, 1 times 10 to the negative 4, we can pretend that this negative x is gone. It doesn't exist this minus x here. Now we need to keep those x's there, but hopefully you remember this from unit 3, that uh, because the amount of the 
compound that's dissociating is negligible as compared to the initial amount, we can pretend that that's just not even there at all. So then we need to write our Ka expression. So Ka equals products. over reactants. I should have picked one that was shorter than right. Okay, so K equals that. We know we can plug in these values for that, and we can plug in this value for Ka. So 1.8 times 10, negative 5, equals x squared, because this is x and that's x, so might as well just put x squared. And then this, we're going to drop the minus x, because this is less than negative 4. So therefore, that is our Ka expression. Now we just have to solve this. So multiply by 0.3, and then um, divide by the, I, I'm sorry, and then take the square root. So let me get my calculator so I can figure that out. All right. So let me just quick calculate that. So x, in this case, equals 2.3 times 10 to negative 3. Mole. Now, we're not done, and you need to get used to the notion that you solve for x and you're not done. You've got to do something with it. What is our x? That's the next thing you have to do. Once you figure out what x, the number, what does x represent? x, in this case, represents the concentration of hydrogen ions. But that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for the pH. Well, now that we know the concentration of hydrogen ions, we can very easily find the pH. So we know pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So it's going to be the negative log. 2.3 times 10 to negative 3, which is 2.64. So that's how you find the pH of an, a weak acid, which is a bit more strenuous than finding the pH of a strong acid, but it's not terrible. Okay, a couple more things that I want to say about uh, weak acids and finding their, their pH. One, you're going to see this term percent ionization. That has to do with the change. This is an ionization reaction. I put a plus sign there. Okay? So we are taking a compound, we turn it into ions. So anytime you do that, you have an ionization. The percent of this which has ionized is similar to your change. Now the change is the amount which is ionized. So to find the percent which is ionized, you have to take the amount that's ionized and divide that by the percent. So in this case, the amount that's ionized is 2.3 times 10 to negative 3. We have to divide that by 0.3 and then multiply by that by 100. And that will give us our percent ionization. You don't have to do that for every problem or anything like that. But if you see the term percent ionization, you should know that that's where they got that number from, taking your change, dividing it by your initial. The last thing I want to talk about is diprotic acids. Now, this is a monoprotic acid, meaning that it's losing one hydrogen. If you have a, um, a weak acid that is diprotic, for example, uh, oxalic acid. Okay, oxalic acid has two hydrogens. It can lose both of those. If it loses one hydrogen, well, actually, it would be an equilibrium, wouldn't it? If it loses one hydrogen, it'll turn into this. Okay, so that would call, um, that would have a, um, uh, equilibrium expression, and we call that Ka1. And then that this could go on and lose another hydrogen, the remaining hydrogen. Sorry, lose it. And we call this Ka2. The relationship between Ka1 and Ka2 is that Ka1 is going to be so much greater than Ka2. And when you look at your appendix D in the book, or when I give you the handout in class, you will find the Ka1s are much larger than the Ka2s. Therefore, most of the hydrogen that's going to be in the solution came from the first association. Which means if we're doing a problem like this, what's the pH of 0.3 molar of oxalic acid? You don't need to do two rice tables, one for the first association, one for the second. You can ignore the second association. It is not going to produce a meaningful amount of hydrogen. So therefore, we just do one rice table, just talking about the first association and using that Ka value, and use that to calculate the pH. So diprotic acids aren't any harder than monoprotic acids, and there's triprotic acids, it's the same thing. All right, so that's how you find the pH of a weak acid. Thank you.